There are five easy things that you can do with a magazine page and transform it into something that you can utilize inside your junk journal or your art journal. My name is Peg and I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I hope you'll take a moment and subscribe to my channel. I'd like to deliver to you content that is quick and easy to digest. That notification bell, of course, lets you know when I upload additional content. So let's get started with number one, which is creating a bead from a magazine page to utilize for spine jewelry. So the first thing that I like to do is choose a color that I want that bead to be. So the color I am looking for is within the magazine. Here, I like this red. So I'm going to make these about half inch beads. So the first thing I will do is trim that paper. I'm marking that at the half inch and then I'm just slightly twisting it to bring it into a triangular shape. And that triangular shape will give our bead a little bit of definition. So start with your magazine page at the one half inch mark or the inch mark if you want bigger beads and just kind of slightly adjust it so that you're trimming on a triangular shape. Now I've seen people do this by marking it and measuring it and drawing it, but <clears throat> I just eyeball it. And when you start to cut, you know, cut one, maybe flip your magazine page and cut from the other end and it will kind of define itself a little bit easier. So once we have all of those strips cut, I just have a shish kebab skewer that I use and I'm just twirling that or turning it on that skewer to form it into the bead. So there you can see it a little bit easier and I am grabbing my glue glue stick because when you get down to the end you'll want to glue that in to hold it in place. And once you have that glue adhered, adhered, you just pull it off of the skewer and set it aside. Let's just do one more. So just twist that around the stick until you get close to the end. Put a little dab of glue on the end and I'm just using a glue stick. And there you have two little beads. Now, once you have all of your beads formed, stick them back on that skewer. And this is not necessary, but I like to do it because it gives the bead a little weight. I'm running it through my Versamark. And this is the clear stamping for embossing. So I'm running it through this, getting it nice and wet. And now I'm using a high gloss clear embossing powder and I'm just dumping it over the top and then rolling it through the residue, grabbing my heat gun and I'm going to apply some heat to that to melt that embossing powder. And now what I have is a shiny embossed little bead. And when you clean these on the table, they'll make a, make a little noise. It makes them more substantial. It holds them together. And I'm just setting it there to dry. But look at, look at those beads. Look how nice those look after you put that embossing powder on them. <clears throat> so once we have them all embossed, I'm just, I have some beads that that I've collected over the years. I have some old jewelry I've picked up at, at thrift shops and I'm just going to string those together. These are just little dangles that I have. I have some upper wire that is 20 gauge. I'm just going to turn my little hoop or my little circle at the top to allow it to have something to attach to my spine. 
and I just strung those beads on there and attach my dangle to the bottom. And for some reason, I lost that, that little piece of footage, but I think you understand what happens here. This is just a the chain off of that little thrift shop piece, and I just strung the beads on that chain. And now I'm going to attach just a little dangle at the bottom. So this, all I'm doing here is just stringing beads. So on the piece of copper, I just strung some beads, put another little jump ring at the bottom, and attach the dangle. On the chain, I just strung the beads directly on the chain, put a little jump ring at the bottom. You can see it there. And added that little heart at the bottom. This one is just a straight piece of copper with a little ring attachment on each end. Strung the beads and put the dangle. And those will look really cute hanging on a spine. So this particular technique, if you will, utilizing the magazine page to create your beads, just remember, collect the color you want in the magazine. But let's move on to number two, which is using that magazine page for a resist to collect an image. I've, you want to choose an image that is one of high contrast. So we're going to use this black and white image. And I'm just going to cut it out so we don't have a lot of noise on either side of it. I'm just cutting and I'm going to use the words as well. On this and this makes a great insert into a journal into an art journal great for collaging and I have some uh, residue on my gel press which is what I'm pointing out here and I'm okay with that so I'm going to leave that and allow that to come up in my pole I'm using a raw umber and I'm just going to put this on some copy paper the secret here is a very thin layer of paint. So I am using the brayer, very light touch with the brayer, and just getting a very even, very thin layer of paint. Now I'm going to put this magazine image down and use that brayer once again to make sure I have good contact. So I'm putting a bit more pressure here when I am trying to get that magazine to resist where that image is. And we are successful. So I'm going to allow that to dry to the touch. So it doesn't come up. I'm testing it there. And of course, I got my fingerprint in it. So I'm just going to sit back and be patient for a little bit longer. And once it is dry to the touch, I put down a thin layer of iridescent white paint and am pulling that image with that second coat of paint. And there you have it. And I have a link above to a video okay. that I did on just this magazine I resist because I do realize that I missed that um, second coat there. So this is what that image looks like once pulled. And that's number two. So let's move to number three, which is just utilizing an image out of the magazine as a focal point. So I've chosen the image that I want. I've glued it down to an APC size card. And the only thing I'm doing here is adding some stencil. I've chosen to use that peeled paint alongside this image of a tree that I've cut out and glued to a two and a half by three and a half inch piece of watercolor paper. Just going to ink around the outside edge of that. And I can now use this for an APC. I can use it for a journaling card or something to tuck down inside a nature journal maybe. So any image that you find in a magazine that is worthy 
Cut it out and use it as a as a focal point. To dress up the back of that, I am just adhering tea stained paper and I just am utilizing some scrap strips, inking the edge of them and gluing them down to give just a little bit more interest to the journaling spot on this card. There we go. So one nice image out of the magazine turned into a very nice little note card for a journal. Moving on to number four is creating some collage paper by moving. I do recommend you do this in a very well ventilated area because the fingernail polish remover, as you well know, is highly odorous. I guess is the, is the best word I can think of to describe it. So the first thing I'm doing is choosing a piece of paper that has a lot of rich color. This one had a lot of purple in it. And I am lightly going over with a old t-shirt and some fingernail polish remover and just removing the wording, just disguising that. So I've just clouded it up, kind of buffed it with that, um, old t-shirt and fingernail polish remover and I'm bringing in a stencil to just remove some additional color there where it was highly colored with purple to add a little noise on the purple and now I will go back over that cloudy white area and remove some additional color there. So the key to this is your touch. You don't want to be overly aggressive with your pressure or you will rip your paper. So lightly rub. And when you're coming back for the second time, just add a slight bit more pressure to get that tone on tone white. And any stencil. Now the one thing too that I found, this is a, this cleans my stencils up too, and sometimes removes a little bit of the ink onto my page as well. So if you want a, or the paint, I mean, instead of the ink, well, it could be ink, it could be paint, who knows what we have used them for in the past. But if you want to clean your stencil first, you have no ink or paint transfer, if you don't mind and you're just looking for an organic collage piece, go for it. Clean your stencil at the same time you you develop some, just choose carefully the magazine pages you put underneath your stencil to clean it. So there we go with our with our first piece. I think that, that turned out pretty nice. I want to add a little bit more to it by stamping, and I'm just utilizing a random script stamp and and again, randomly stamping across it. And I think that turns out to a pretty good collage paper. Moving on to number five, I'm distressing the background using the same process. I'm going to tear that magazine page into little bits. I am laying down a Mod Podge base on this ATC card and just gluing those bits to this paper. We'll be moving the color of these pieces to the edges to give that background a very distressed look. So I'm going to trim around the outside edge to get off everything that is flowing over. Taking the same t-shirt, the same fingernail polish remover, lightly rubbing and just pushing that color towards those areas that the papers connect. So you can kind of see how that distresses that background and gives it that um, rustic look. And to allow that to show, I'm choosing a napkin to mod podge over the top of it. And I have this big image of a tulip that I think I am going to just angle right on this card. Mod Podge that on.
hit it with the heat tool to hurry that drying process or to speed up that drying process. And now I'm just going to trim around the outside edge and then I'll take a little bit of sanding, take my sanding block and just get off any little rough bits of the napkin that were still sticking out there. And there you have a quick and easy little note card that you can stick down inside your journal. And that image, that background, shows through very well once that napkin is Mod Podge down. So I hope you enjoyed this video, these five simple things that you can do with a magazine page. And if you would, please subscribe to my channel. For those of you that already have, I genu genuinely appreciate you being here. And I've linked a couple other videos that I think you might enjoy. So I shall say bye for now.